What's up, Awakening? Today, I am speaking to you about Hebrews 12, um, also known as the endurance chapter. At least that's how I remember it. The run your race, throw off what hinders. Um, that's usually like all I really <laughs> remember about this passage, honestly. Um, but this time, knowing that I was going to be speaking on Hebrews 12, I was uh, reading through it and something just stuck out to me that I felt was really important. So it's Hebrews 12, 12 through 13, and a really long passage. So hold on to your horses. Uh, it says, So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Um, the reason that this passage stuck out to me so clearly um, was because it it really like made me aware that it wasn't all about me. Um, just like even in the past couple months, I've been pretty egocentric, if I'm being honest, like how I feel, you know, like what I really want to do, what I'm not good, like all this kind of stuff. And it's very me heavy, um, which honestly can get really annoying, I bet, for even the people that are around me. But um, like... It was all about my race, like what, what race am I running? How am I performing for the Lord? Like it was just very like not the way that I needed to be thinking. Um, and this passage showed me that there was someone else I was gonna have to be watching out for in my race. Um, there, was, there was someone else in my world and there, it wasn't necessarily gonna be somebody who was like healthy and spiritually strong, but like somebody who was weak, lame, someone that needed help. Um, Speaking about being weak and lame and someone that needed help, uh, earlier this year, I went rock climbing with um, my good friend, Caitlin Singleton. Shout out, Caitlin. But I hadn't been rock climbing until, like, since I was in sixth grade. I remember it being super easy and like being way faster than all the other girls and just being super good at it. Um, and so I was like, man, this is going to be a piece of cake. Like, I'm so ready for this. And I showed up and like, two of the easiest climbs in, like my fingers felt like they were non-existent. Like my knuckles were cramped, like my knees were cracking. I was so tired. Like I was like having to take a break after every climb. It was not, it was not good. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Paid $60, but like, that's it. I only need to do two climbs. And Caitlin's like, no, you're going again. So she makes me like get up and, and try a third time and halfway through I'm like, Caitlin, no, I can't, I can't do it. I can't keep going. And she's like, Sky, you can, you're strong enough. Just take one more step, keep going. She was being so encouraging and I did end up making it to the top. Uh, but the whole time I wanted to fall, the whole time, but like if it hadn't been for her and like her strength and her words of encouragement, there's no way I would have made it to the top a third time. And after that, I definitely gave up. But like for that time being, she was super supportive. Um, to someone who was <laughs> weak and absolutely lame like me, um, and she encouraged me to keep going. So it, reading this again, it says, so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Now, we may not always feel strong enough to take a new grip. We might not feel strong enough to make it to the top of whatever mountain we're climbing. We might be tired, upset, annoyed, whatever, but we are able to continue our race if we rely on God, if we push into Him and, and continue to draw on Christ's strength because, and this is where it gets important, um, where I was made aware that it wasn't all about me, because when we rely on God, then we use our own, like the growing strength that we have in Christ to help those who are weak and struggling. Um, so you might be weak and struggling right now, continue to grow into Christ. And then when you've got that, like then you can help your weak and your lame neighbor, someone who needs help, um, someone who's struggling. Because it's really important to remember that if we are Christ followers, if we claim we are living for Christ, then we have a responsibility to others. We're in the people business. <laughs> like um, that's our responsibility. Hebrews 12, 5, uh, 15, after that, continues to say, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Uh, we, we are not supposed to be living with our own eternity in mind. With I said only, I mean, like only our own eternity in mind, I should say, because if we do that, we're missing the whole point of the gospel. If it's just about our eternity and like how we make it to like all that kind of stuff, um, then like 
We're missing it. You've missed it. It's about other people. Uh, Christine K Kane said, you are running an interdependent race, not an independent sprint. We need to be aware that there are other people running this race with us. Yeah, we're running our race, but like, are you aware that there is someone else that you're in a relay? You're not in a sprint. You know, um, we're not supposed to be leaving others behind. We're supposed to be passing the baton. We're supposed to be making disciples. Um, that's the great commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. We have to be aware that there are other people running the race beside us. Um, and that's not necessarily just about telling other people about Jesus, which is like so, so important. But it's also about modeling. Um, it's about what we model in our own lives so that others are strengthened in their race. Like I said, uh, mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. So we're wanting to build up people. Um, if you went out into the wilderness, let's just say, uh, it'd be pretty easy for you to just like go out and walk wherever you wanted to and, you know, do your own thing. Uh, but if you were to like text a friend and be like, hey, meet up with me, like without a clear marked path behind you, they might make a wrong turn. They might end up getting hurt. They might end up lost if they're super directly challenged, like lost forever. Like that. No, not good. But here I am asking myself now, thinking about this, and am I someone that's setting a great example for others? Am I being mindful of those around me? Am I aware that there are other people in my race? Am I living in such a way that will end up leading someone to Jesus or leaving somebody confused, hurt, or even lost? Um, and that might just be where you have to sit sometimes mentally is like asking yourself these questions because it's not all about you. I want to leave you with these two questions now. Are you aware of the other people running alongside you? Are you aware of the people that are in um, your place of work that don't know the Lord? Are you aware of the people that you're even in com close community with that are struggling in their relationship with Jesus? Like, are you asking those questions to really get to the heart of the people that are in your lives so that you, through your strength, can, uh, through, I should say, through Christ's strength in you, can help them to grow? Um, and so that's really what I wanted to leave you with. And are you making your path straight enough for someone to follow? So are you aware of the other people running with you? And are you making your path straight enough for someone to follow? Or would the way that you're living your own life, and this is a question for myself, leave someone hurt, confused, and lost? Would someone grow in their strength watching how you live your life for Jesus? Um, Mark 12, 30 through 31, going out of Hebrews a little bit. Uh, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Um, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Yeah, you, you have to love God. Uh, you have to take care of yourself. You've got to love yourself. But you have to also be aware that there are weak and tired neighbors that are in your life that you are supposed to help strengthen. And that is love. So remember, it's not all about you. Love you, Awakening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.